Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, we are going to do an update to the Las Vegas real estate market. Okay. Today is um, April 9th. We apologize that we have not, we've only done like two videos in the last two weeks. Okay. One of us had major reconstructive replacement surgery on one of their limbs. Was it Juana? <laughs> I've been in a ton of pain. It's been, we actually shot two of the videos and I'm sitting over here in like baggy pants and massive pain. Mm -hmm. The two videos we shot, but we are back and we're going to do the best market update you have ever seen ever. So because of that, you must subscribe and share the video right now or the video will pause and you won't be able to see any more of the video. So <laughs> do that really quick. Now, here we go. We're going to jump right in. Las Vegas uh, update. Okay. The first number we're going to look at here. If you could see if you go to, over to real time market profile, okay, per square foot. Now in December it was two fifty eight a square foot, mm -hmm. right, and now it's two seventy four. This gets better, but let me just point this out. One, since December, that's sixteen bucks a square foot. That means your two thousand square foot average home is worth thirty two thousand dollars more mm -hmm. than it was worth in December. That's pretty impressive. That's very impressive. Okay. Now, when we go over to the next slide and I show you this, this is what it's done in the last week. Okay. You can see a week ago, Friday, March 29th, it was 271 bucks a square foot. Today it's 274 a square foot. That is pretty impressive. It is. It is. Look, I mean, we're not saying that homes are going up by leaps and bounds, but However, we are saying that homes, that home values are certainly trending upward. A lot of this is a little misleading because of the low inventory. So low inventory means few data points. Few data points means that the data points that are there have an outsized impact on the market. So if, you, if you're looking at them as, as a sample, yes, that's true. But when you're looking at the broader market, would it be the same if there were more homes on the market? Probably not. Because supply and demand would, would, not, yeah. would not give us the same thing. Here's a good example of what Juan is saying. If there was only one house you could buy and it was 400000 that was like what the market value is in a normal market. But it was the only house you could buy. That house would sell for like five hundred five. dollars Like it would literally sell for a ton more. It's the only house people could purchase. Right. You'd have like 80 people trying to buy the last house. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So that's like a supply and demand constraint. We are seeing that because we, you know, it's funny because somebody has been sharing these charts of like the whole U S and how mm -hmm. there's inventory starting to build up finally, which is we need, but then Vegas is the outlier. Right. We're the down 40% and everybody else is, is, has more inventory. Right. So for example, depending on the price point, like, uh, we put a, a home in the MLS, um, not even a week ago and we've got half a dozen offers on it. So that kind of lets you know what's going on. It's not that the home is priced uh, under market value. The home is actually priced at a premium considering the lack of inventory and we're, we still have all these offers on it. Yeah. Um, and then here, so here's the next one uh, up at the top median list price. Uh, December, the median list price was 534. It's 584. That's mm -hmm. a pretty substantial jump, right? That's 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Now that's, remember that's list price. Uh, now it is, it is a leading indicator. Why is this a leading indicator? I'm sorry. Why is what it mean? The what list prices? Oh right. Like list prices going up. Yes. What does that mean? Is are they going up? Because a lot of people, when we point this out, they go, "Oh, list prices. They're made up. <laughs> Anyone can list for any amount." Yeah. yeah, but in general, when list prices are going up, what does that mean? So when list prices are going up, th th those are forward looking, right? Because what's happening is both the sellers and their agents are looking forward at where the market's going. So that that's a good way of. Uh, of understanding what's happening because we look at what has sold, we look at what's on the market with us, and then we price that property commensurate with all this information rather than just looking back. So remember, an appraisal is is backward looking, and a list price is forward looking. Uh, if you go down to the inventory, which is down toward the bottom, you could see December twenty second. It was twenty four fifty four. Now, in a normal market, that should probably be. Four or five thousand, right? Mm -hmm. That's just this is just Vegas single family homes, and you could see that last week it started to, inventory started to pick up a little bit. We thought, oh, it's the 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 spring is sizzling out. It's mm -hmm. gonna it's just gonna peter out, just kind of chill out. 
Actually, when I saw the numbers today, I was super like, what the hell? This can't be right because I saw the price for sure foot shoot up. I saw listings disappear. We've got more data here. But you could see the massive drop. That's over 100. That little downward thing is over 100, which means 100 more houses sold this week than came on the market. Mm -hmm. So that means that you know, maybe 400 people put the house on the market, but 500 houses sold. Mm -hmm. Right? And we don't know the mix of those. It, some of them could have been like the one listing we just have. Um, where we just took, put the listing in the MLS and literally think we have five or six offers on it, right? So right. it's a super hot listing, uh, which is going to sell for sure. Okay, this is the price per square foot over the last five years. Mm -hmm. You, As you can see, you could basically draw a line from the bottom left corner to the right where it says 175, and that's kind of the trend line that Vegas has followed. Mm -hmm. There was a little ups and downs as buyers got a little exuberant because of interest rates, but Wana, we have fully made up. Remember all the people who pointed at home prices in the spring of one year and then the fall, ooh, they dropped. Well, they drop every year, spring to fall. You can see they did that this last year too. They dropped a little bit. Um, they, now they didn't in 20 and 21, and the reason they didn't do it those years is because the, there was just no inventory. Right. There was no inventory. So, but you, as you can see here, we fully made up all of that. We are back on top, the highest sale prices we have ever had. Mm -hmm. And it looks like this is only April. We still, remember, it's still going to be hot for a couple more months and mm -hmm. with real estate. May, June, we're going to blast out of that. Uh, what happened to our 40 to 50% price drops that people were going to... We were supposed to see that was forecast by a bunch of crash bros. Where'd they go? Well, not in this market. Okay. <laughs> and remember when you're looking at that, that's only that total change is only about 7% because remember the bottom of this chart's 150 mm -hmm. bucks a foot. Okay. This is the inventory chart. This is a bit crazy. If I showed you this chart over the last 20 years, it would look more normal. It would be like a sine wave up and down, spring and fall. It, it's crazy like this because of the thing that happened that we are not allowed to talk about. And inventory, you know, the real estate just turned hot. Well, it's that and a combination of other things, right? It's, it's monetary supply when the thing happened, and then it's interest rates after the thing happened, and inflation, you know, went gangbusters. So it's a lot of different things. But yes, the root of all that is the thing that happened. Okay, what's funny now is if you look at this chart, remember, Nate, nationwide inventory in 2021 and two was super low. Mm -hmm. So now the crash bros are making these charts showing, oh, look how much more inventory there were like as a percentage. Look at the percentage of inventory that's a higher. Yeah, but you have to compare this historically. When you step back and look historically, we still have nationally about 60% of what we would have had 2015, 16 mm -hmm. uh, before Inventory started, 2017 is actually when inventory started slowly like declining you know, over about three or four years straight. Mm -hmm. So you really have to go to all the way back to 2014, 15, 16 to really see what inventory should be like. If you were looking at this chart, if this chart could show it to you where inventory should be, it would be, if you're watching on your phone, it's probably a whole phone like width above this. It's It, it be, wouldn't, show, wouldn't chart on this. It wouldn't, because this chart only goes to 7K. Okay. Um, what are you saying with anecdotally with inventory? So it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, lots of people would like to, to see more inventory, meaning buyers would like to see more inventory, mm -hmm. so they have more choices. Uh, you have sellers. They're still kind of on the fence um, because they can't find anything to move into if they were to sell their home. And then you have sellers that are sitting back saying, hey, um, there's a new studio, for example, that's going to be built in Summerlin and there are going to be lots of new jobs, lots of people who are going to be making very healthy wages moving to the area. So maybe I'll hold out and um, take advantage of these people moving in when they get here and sell my home for more money. So that there's kind of two camps, but both camps, whether it's people who can't find something to buy and those who want to hold out for the Californians, because we're always, we always hold out for those Californians. Californians. <laughs> for those Californians uh, who are, are coming to town with all their money. Yes, um, bags. The bags of money. Exactly. So, but both camps are kind of in the same place in that neither one of them is willing to sell today.
Okay, this is really the most telling chart. Uh, it's not really a chart; it's more of a table. We call everything a chart, <laughs> but you get the idea here. This is the market segments. Now, if you've mm -hmm. never seen this, there's four market segments. It's the bottom quarter of the market, the quarter above that, the second from the top, and the top quarter. These are the where all the houses are, mm -hmm. and it's numbers of houses. So there's equal number of houses in all of these. Uh, represented by price, and then that median is the median of that number. Mm -hmm. So that 1.4 million isn't the bottom, it's the median. So that means that one in every eight homes in Vegas mm -hmm. is o over 1.4 million. Now, does that blow your mind a little bit? That Historically. That, that would blow anybody's mind who's from Vegas or who has ever lived in Vegas up, up to now. <laughs> the other thing that's mind-blowing is this 385. The median home price in 2009 was about 135. Mm -hmm. Median. This is the mid middle of the bottom quarter. Like 385 would have been a. I don't know if you could have gotten Red Rock Country Club for 385, but you got a pretty darn nice house. You could have got a 4,000 square foot house with a pool easily for 385 in 2009. Like a super nice house. Right. The house today would be definitely a million bucks. Okay, but what's interesting about this is when you go over to where it says new and absorbed and then days on the market. Okay. So let's start with the very top, 46 new homes. Some of those were probably your luxury listings, right? Sure. Your luxury mm -hmm. listing broker over there. Mm -hmm. But 63 were purchased. Mm -hmm. So more luxury homes were purchased than actually came on the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why inventory dropped. Then you go down to the second one, 136 absorbed. Only 84 came on. So it's like 50 more sold than were. And then the next one down, Another, this is another 50, 173 absorbed, 123, and then the bottom, bottom quarter of the market. This is the hot quarter. This is where the listing you were talking about that mm -hmm. has all the offers is, right? Mm -hmm. um, this one is 130 new, came on the market, but 195 were absorbed. So 65 more sold, mm -hmm. and which is why you have five or six offers on mm -hmm. a property Right. that's, you know, well, so that, that speaks to a lot of different things. It speaks to the price point. It speaks to lack of inventory. Uh, it speaks to the fact that it's springtime and a lot of, there are a lot of buyers out there more than usual, right, mm -hmm. uh, looking. So it speaks to all of that. But the bottom line is supply and demand. I know I kind of keep beating this up, but that's really what it's about. We have more demand than we have supply. And in, in this case, we have you know, a handful of buyers for one property that lets you know that there just aren't enough properties for these buyers. Uh, the myth that there were a bunch of new homes that would flood the market, whatever, people would go buy those. Like, it's not like the builders, like, we're not going to sell them yet. We're going to wait. We're going to keep them and keep paying interest on all this money we borrowed to build them. There are no, there is no such thing as builder homes that have like been built that are sitting around. No. Everything that's been built is either under contract or somebody already owns it. Right. Doesn't mean it's occupied, but it's not on the market. It's sold. Right. To somebody I mean, else. There are some some new builds that are almost ready that are uh, maybe have fallen out or something like that. But the number is inconsequential. It's not it's not sufficient to move the needles the, the needle in. And you can see that because we have multiple offers on properties. We wouldn't have multiple offers if there were enough homes for everybody. Right. Um, uh, the other thing that's interesting about this chart is that twenty eight days on the market for that. Usually it's the lowest, has the lowest number of days on the market and then the highest. Now this could be misleading because you could have, you know, it, it could be skewed because of where the houses are in there, but 28 days, Juana, mm -hmm. for a, like that's less than a month for a $500,000 house, mm -hmm. $500,000 house. Now remember there's half the houses are more than this because they're overpriced potentially, right? Maybe. It's possibly that they're overpriced or that they're not priced competitively with other homes in the, in the neighborhood, maybe, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it could be they have other challenges, too. Yeah. Okay. Where does this put us going into May, June? What are you seeing? Because you're like you were up this morning, like texting and calling clients on all the offers on their property, like two different sellers. There were offers going back and forth and counter offers at like super early in the morning. Well, you know, you have to, you have to service clients. Okay. I know that. So where, where does this put us? May, June, July. I mean, I, you, we tend to be October, November, December is when the market chills out a little mm -hmm. bit, less competition, stuff sits on the market a little longer. Right. Where, I mean, obviously there are a lot of people who don't want to move here and wait six months. They mm -hmm. rather just buy. 
Right. So where does this put us, say, for the next three months? What does this look like? Um, I don't think inventory is going to increase. I think it's going to probably stay about the same. I mean, week in, week out, it'll go up, it'll go up, it'll go down, but nothing substantial. I don't think okay. it's, it's going to really move the needle. I don't think inventory is going to do a whole lot for the rest of the year. There's no reason to think so. Um, the Fed, you know, back way back when, I said, well, I hope the Fed doesn't lower interest rates until after the first quarter, and, and they didn't, so that was good. Um, you know, now there's talk that it won't even happen in the second quarter. I don't know about that. I think that that's, I think a jury's still out on that one. Um, I think that's possible. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to wait for inflation numbers, for um, employment numbers, and, and other, a whole host of other numbers for the Fed to make a decision on that. I think the Fed is very thoughtful. I have to give them props for being very thoughtful and caring about the economy and caring about how our country moves forward rather than. Uh, putting political concerns ahead of that at this point in time. That's not to say that may not change as we get closer to the election, but at least for now, the economy is still top of mind, and I'm very, very proud of them for having done that. The last jobs number just came out in March, mm -hmm. over 300,000 new jobs, right. higher than was expected. Um, they're still talking about maybe three interest rate declines. I, what I happen, think that, that's what happens if we get interest rates below 6% in the fall when it's normally pretty slow? Does the fall get a little hotter because now maybe people are like thinking, hey, maybe I should buy? Maybe. Maybe. I think – I really don't think people are going to buy in the fall I don't, regardless of what interest rates do. I think that um, the closer we get to the election, the more uncertainty people are going to feel and the more they're just going to want to wait and see how things shake out. I think that um, lowering interest rates too close to the election will not spur more buyers because of that. Well, yeah, but the idea is they would lower interest rates to make the economy right. I appear better that. short term. I, I because do because they're trying to yes. steer a, a policy like, hey, this policy works, this policy doesn't work. Right, right, and and I appreciate that, but you know, you were asking. They shouldn't what, be doing what, that at all. Well, and I I agree with you, but yeah. what I'm saying is that I don't see buyers. I think the closer we get the election, I think the less buyer activity we're going to see because I think people are going to be holding back and um, letting the uncertainty rule them rather than making long-term decisions. Okay. That's possible. Okay. All right. So um, please give Todd a big thumbs up for this video, for having made it through the whole video. You can see how much he's missed you guys. You can see how enthusiastic <laughs> We'll be been. making more than one video a week, but it was like it's been pretty hard to make videos. <laughs> So I let the, uh, the whole team, the entire staff, I gave them the two weeks off. <laughs> They're in like beaches and places sending us pictures and stuff. We, it's like 24 people to do all the, you know, everything behind the scenes. You can't see them because we're just the people in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. So right. thumbnail creators, all these people <laughs> that are involved in the production here. All right. So. so Please give him a big thumbs up for, um, for being here and for doing the video. We really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, like the video. Leave us your real estate related comments and you don't have to agree with us. Uh, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.